Good afternoon and welcome to the first in our series of marketing webinars known as the Sundown Series. I'm Marshall Betzel, President of the Queensland Seafood Marketers Association. The QSMA has developed this series to provide a tailwind for seafood businesses to harness for their own marketing and sales over the next 12 months. The Sundown Series has been designed as an informal end of day Zoom gathering where experts from the seafood industry will share their insights to help you make the most of this once in a generation opportunity. This series will provide tips, tricks and techniques to improve your ability to attract and delight customers while building your own meaningful and memorable brand. The first in our series this afternoon is Selling Seafood Through Social Media. Ben Hale from Love Australian Prawns will show you how to set up an online store with no technical knowledge and then use social media to drive hungry customers straight to your checkout. He'll pass on the techniques and tools he'll use to connect one-to-one -one with a million customers through digital channels and give you some practical ideas to try itself. The second in our series, set down for the same time next Monday, is entitled Branding Bold and Beautiful and will be presented by John Sussman. John intimately knows seafood from the wet, messy production end to the finest white linen cloth tables. His experience in creating and building some of Australia's most successful seafood brands is yours to tap in this entertaining and enlightening session to help you define, expand and promote your brand. If there's enough interest and support from the industry, QSMA will look to develop, a, develop these webinars further with additional marketing subjects to add to the information already provided in the series. QSMA would like to expend, express its thanks to FRDC and, F, and the financial and administrative support in getting the series off the ground. Now, while the series hasn't been designed as a replacement for our National Marketing Symposium, it has nonetheless been designed as an opportunity for our industry to come together in a different format during COVID. Um, okay, a few administrative points. Can I ask you please to put yourselves on mute during the presentation to avoid disruption from any background noise? Secondly, if you have any questions you would like raised during the session, please type them into the Q&A page, hit send, and we'll endeavour to cover them during the presentation. There will also be a chance to ask final questions via the Q&A page at the end of Ben's session. Okay, so a quick introduction regarding Ben. Okay, so Ben Hale is a marketer who has spent the last seven years delivering the Australian Prawns campaign for the Australian Council of Prawn Fisheries and the Australian Prawn Farmers Association. The campaign is well known in the seafood sector as the only voluntary funded national marketing campaign for an entire seafood category. But long before the Australian, Australian Love Australian Prawns campaign was the twinkle in the eyes of its creators, five years to be exact, Jim Fogarty and I walked into Ben Hale's office and says he was dismantling his traditional mass media advertising agency, which at the time employed 30 people and had a turnover nudging 8 million per annum. So why six months before the first iPhone ever arrived in Australia was Ben dismantling a successful traditional media business? He glimpsed at what was coming down the road, or more specifically, the information superhighway, and could see the traditional media landscape was going to be disrupted beyond all recognition. So rather than being disrupted by outside influences, when, when in early and became one of the disruptors, completely reinventing his business around digital and online marketing. So there we were 13 years ago in Ben's boardroom, while furniture and photocopies were being carried out the door having a meeting about how he could help North Queensland fishers get a better price for Endeavour prawns. The campaign Ben produced helped the entire fleet return a much improved price for Endeavour prawns for the cost of replacing one auxiliary engine. The species became a brand that people still walk into fish shops today asking for by name. Since then, Ben has been keen in delivering online and social campaigns for many others in the seafood industry. Now in his 3,500th day of work from home in Noosa, Ben delivers campaigns at a scale he used to employ 30 people to do, just by using insanely powerful and simple online tools that are available to everyone who is willing to learn to use them. 
The world we live in now is dominated by online information, online selling and online marketing. What Ben hopes to do for you today is help you to get started selling online if you haven't already and also give you some handy pointers on how to use your social media to drive customers to your digital and bricks and mortar stores. So please sit back, sit back, relax and enjoy. Uh, grab a cold beverage if that's your fancy. Queensland Supermarketers not only promotes the consumption of Australian seafood, but also the responsible consumption of Australian wine and beverages as well. That was for your benefit, Patrick. So please give a warm digital welcome to your host for today, Mr. Ben Hale. Thank you very much, Marshall. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks to the FRDC and the QSMA. Um, I'm going to hopefully uh, share with you a whole bunch of helpful techniques that will get you up and running online and selling through social. All right, let's get this screen shared and away. All right, I uh, hope everyone can see that. All right. Uh, now, the poll that we're uh, running today is just so that it, it can help me decide where to focus uh, our attention. And it looks like we're split really evenly down the middle. Um, I'll uh, just need to move a window there for a sec. Yeah, we are. We're split almost 52-48. So, um, all right, let's get on the way. Uh, so the first thing for selling anything uh, is great images and selling online even more so. Um, I'll teach you how to skimp and save on all sorts of uh, media buyers and things like that, but the thing that you should never underinvest in is great images of your product, uh, of the waters where your product comes from and of the people that work uh, with you. It's been a mainstay of what LAP does um, and it's even if it's a local photographer, uh, with a drone that can get some great footage of vessels, images are everything. And still images are great. Video is quite difficult, um, but you can make video from stills quite easily as well. So images matter. And there we go. It's a bit slow responding. There we go. As you can see, these are actually just uh, images that are fresh off the camera from last week for Love Australian Prawns. Um, and one quick tip. If you do want to make images easily and good looking social media um, uh, posts, I highly recommend Canva, which is an Australian company and a fantastic service. It just makes look designs for social media look great. All right, so let's get into it. Selling online. Um, so what does LAP use an online store for? What do we do online? We actually don't sell direct to the public. We're trying to make the public hungry for Australian prawns. But we do sell one product on our consumer website, uh, which is our 100 page uh, Love Australian Prawns Great Australian Cookbook. Uh, but we also, on a completely separate site, use an online store to distribute 45 different promotional lines to about 400 different retailers. Now, the LAP campaign originally would ship uh, a standard one size fits all box of recipe books. Uh, stickers, posters, etc. But it always would create waste. But how can one person create bespoke packages for over 400 retailers and maintain uh, cogent communications with them? And we use our online store specifically for that. Uh, but what it is, is all, also helps us recover some of the costs of production and distribution. Uh, we can email retailers when we've got new products in the store. And what is so great about an online store is that they might come and, and buy some of the products that we're introducing, but they'll always just grab something else to go along with it the previous year. So none of our older materials go to waste. Eventually we have full utilization of all the marketing materials that we uh, ever produce. But we also use an online store for a third um, reason, and that is to accept payments. Um, from producers. Now, I'm not sure if that poll is in the way. I'll just get that out of the way. Um, so if, if any of you have got a, a phone uh, handy, uh, point it at that QR code. 
And so what's great about having an online store is that, you know, you can actually, once you can accept payments, uh, you can create all sorts of different products uh, and it really just streamlines your ability to, um, yep, to uh, collect payments. Of course, someone's trying to call now. Um, all right, so what is an online store? You might think it's a website that sells products, but it's actually a little bit different than that. It's a catalog of products uh, that then get published to a bunch of different platforms. So when you establish an online store, you're actually just creating a product catalog uh, by putting in the information, the, um, the price, the variance, just all of the product information, the great images that we've just been talking about. And you then publish that out to different, um, different places. We use Shopify for Love Australian Prawns, but there are other platforms that are equally as capable. We just find Shopify uh, robust, easy to use, and hasn't failed us in any way in four or five years. Uh, if you run WordPress and you're familiar with WordPress sites, there's another um, service called WooCommerce, which does a very similar thing. So you've got your product catalog and you publish it out to a whole bunch of different platforms and you control what's visible. So website, Facebook, Amazon, Instagram, email marketing, QR codes, um, a, a wharf to accept payments. Um, you can also harmonize your inventory with a real world store. You can also sell on eBay. Uh, so let's just have a quick look um, behind the scenes at how we operate for Love Australian Prawns. All right. So we've just jumped into the Love Australian Prawns uh, store. Uh, we've got all sorts of information presented with us, uh, the sales just uh, in the last seven days, how many sessions have been on our store, the top selling products, uh, all the information necessary to really sort of make sense of what people are doing on the store and how they do it. If you're going to set up a store, don't worry about how it looks online. The first thing you should be doing is actually putting the products in. You know, that's what matters the most. So why don't we do that? Why don't we just add a product from scratch just to show you how easy it is. So we're going to introduce a new product, the LAP widget. Um, you know, the best... Uh, Widget for your needs. So we give it a title, we give it a description, and obviously there's an art to product description. Let's have a look at our files. Um, all right. So the best way to upload files is, I find, is just generally a square format. Uh, it's your best off keeping the same format for every product. It doesn't matter if it's not square, but as long as they're all the same. Let's give it a price, $15. We can also um, give it a was and give it a discount if we like. So we can, we can have uh, it show up as you know, $20 was 15. We can enter a cost um, as well for cost control. Of course, we're gonna charge tax. We add a, a stock keeping unit. Let's have a thousand that are available. It is a physical product. So let's make sure that we've got a weight that's gonna help us with our shipping. Um, and the other thing too, is that we can add variants very easily. So say if it's king prawns, you can have U8 and 10 and 15, you just simply add those options there and it all works out fine. Let's save that and we're done. We've actually published a product onto our website. Now what matters here is this interesting box over here on the right, product availability. So we're selling now currently on seven different channels already, an online store, uh, a Facebook shop, a buy button, which lets us embed that product into other websites, Instagram, Google. You can see there's two Facebooks. Facebook is going through a bit of a change at the moment. So uh, it's tra transitioning from one shop to the other. Uh, and there we are. So let's have a look at our product. How does it look? Fantastic. So here we have our LAP widget. Um, now, if I can create a checkout link. And let's have a look at our chat. Um, yeah, I can send you that link and you can start, start buying. So that's how simple it is to start adding products to the Shopify platform. All right. Actually, 
Do we want that widget available on every platform? Maybe not, let's edit it. We'll let, um, let me see. I don't know if we want it on Facebook, we don't need know Instagram, Google, blah, blah, blah. Let's just make it available in the online store and we're done. It really is that straightforward. Um, now, of course, you'll want to then connect Shopify to your bank account and to uh, PayPal. That's very easily done in the settings. Let me say that. Uh, so what we see now on this left-hand side is all that Shopify does for, it, for us. Let's see what's available in the online store. And as you can see, we've got all of our LAP stock with full stock counts. Obviously, we have actually quite a lot of zero in stock because uh, uh, pre-COVID, we asked all the retailers, what can we do to help? And they raided us, um, which was great. That's what we wanted to see, our marketing materials out there. So that's a really quick intro as to, to how simple it really is to set up an online store. So a lot of you are probably thinking, well, I've got a Facebook page and I've got a website and I wanna start using an online store. How do we kind of make all of these things work together? Um, so, well, here we are, back here. All right, so you've got a Facebook page and you've got your website and your website's not selling products yet. So, and your Facebook page is probably sending traffic to your website and that's, that's how it's kind of working as a marketing tool for you now. So this is the only technical thing in the whole presentation uh, that we're going to, that I'd, I would ask of you and, and that's to install what's called a pixel onto your website. It's a simple bit of code uh, that you paste onto your website or have your um, IT guy, whoever the person that dwells in the basement with food in their beard is, uh, and copy that code on. And the reason you copy your Facebook pixel onto your website is it means your website starts talking back to the Facebook page. And it starts to tell your Facebook page some interesting things that are gonna help you with your marketing, like who's visiting, uh, how many people are visiting, and what pages they're visiting. And the reason you're going to want to know that, and Facebook is going to want to know that, is because you can start to build what are called custom audiences. So you can say, hey, Facebook, I'm about to run an ad, um, and I really actually want to um, reach the people who have been on my website in the past 30 days. That's called remarketing or retargeting. And I'm sure you've seen it happen a lot when you go on the web, you search for something, and then all of a sudden you see um, ads for what you've just searched for. Uh, but that's not where the real power is. The, the real power is the next step. So you say, Facebook, go out and find more people like those who visited my website. And it's called a lookalike audience. So it'll take a sample of 100 or 300 people, whoever have been on your website, form a bit of a profile about them, and then go and find other people who match that profile. And it actually works really, really well in going out and finding more customers. So now, you want to set up your store. So you've gone to Shopify, you've introduced, you put your products in, uh, you've connected up your bank accounts, you've had a few tests and it's working all right. So then, and remember, it is just a catalog of products that you will then set to publish in places. It will be a standalone page as well. And I, um, I can circle back actually and show you how you can design that page. Uh, Shopify has those very simple tools. You just upload your image, and just upload your logo and it fits into a template that you then control. So it actually can be a standalone website. So you don't even need to adjust your existing website. But if you look at the, the website, you can start embedding products on your own website. Or you can go, you know what? I just like my website as it is. Let's just open the shop and start sending traffic from our website to the store. Just put a link on your website saying store. And Shopify will act as uh, the web page uh, like an extension of your own website. The other thing you can do is start sending traffic from Facebook to the store directly. And guess what? You can also link your store up on Facebook in the same way that you've got a Facebook pixel. And so what happens there is Shopify starts to share the information about people who are buying. So you'll be able to say, hey, Facebook, we've sold 100 products through our store through various means now. Have a look at who's bought our products and go out and find more people like them. So the algorithm goes and does the same thing. 
forms this group profile uh, and then goes out and finds more people who are more likely to behave like those who have purchased. But Shopify can also publish your product catalog directly to Facebook and people can buy straight out of Facebook. There's actually a store section on Facebook pages. Shopify will publish that straight to your Facebook page. So there's very little integration required from your, um, your perspective. You certainly don't need technical experts to do it. But Shopify obviously collects information about who is purchasing and you can then um, translate that information over into an email or a customer relationship management program. Now, of course, uh, there are laws around who you can and can't email. So uh, it's called, so transactional customers who haven't opted in for your marketing, you can't just email them willy nilly. Um, but you can certainly, from your email list, your existing customer list, uh, whatever email list that you've built over time, then sends traffic straight to your store and start selling directly from email. But another fantastic thing is that you actually can share that information to Facebook and ask Facebook to do exactly the same thing. Hey, go and find more people like my email list and we'll, we'll run ads to them. And of course, you can drive traffic straight from Facebook to collect email addresses. And I see the, uh, the Barra Farmers are doing a really good job with that, running ads on Facebook to get you to uh, fill in your details to get a cookbook. And then of course, that then builds an, an email list. So you can see how that whole ecosystem works together. Um, and you also see the platforms trying to each, eat each other's lunch in some ways that Facebook tries to do a bit of what Shopify does, Shopify tries to do a bit of what Facebook does. Um, but if you look at it, Facebook for marketing, Shopify for your product catalog to be published everywhere, uh, and your website to tell your business story. And if you want, you can sell it on your website as well. So that's a quick rundown of Shopify. One of the great things about Shopify is, as you'll see on the right, that's just a real time uh, stream of the Shopify mobile app. So say you're a producer uh, cruising in, uh, you've, you take a shot of what you've just caught, publish it, uh, straight off your mobile, um, send out an alert, and all of a sudden people can actually start buying before you've even pulled up at the wharf. Uh, and those orders will just be sitting there on your mobile, ready to check off and fulfill. Shopify costs between $29 and $79 US a month, um, and takes a small clip also from the transactions on credit cards, 2.6%, uh, but that gets lower, uh, depending on the plan that you're on. It harmonizes with your in-store POS. So uh, that's really handy. There are small little apps that you can uh, activate on Shopify that can help you connect your existing systems up to Shopify. And, um, and it's probably the, the, the most robust way of doing that that I've discovered. The great thing is you can just start straight away. All right, so we've built a store. Um, so how do we market our store? And all the principles of marketing remain the same. You can't just go up to someone and say, hey, buy, buy my product. Uh, this, is a, this is a more than a 60 year old ad for McGraw Hill uh, business publications, but it's the same thing in terms of how you should structure your marketing. Uh, you can't just ask for the order immediately. You need to make people aware of who you are. You need to make them interested in what you're selling, make them want it, and then, ensure that they can easily buy it. And it's that process that Facebook also uses for organizing and implementing campaigns. So um, you start off, campaigns are sort of built in three layers. There's the campaign level, the top level, which is the objective. There are 11 different objectives which we can run through. Then there's the ad set level, so you can have multiple ad sets underneath your campaign. So you've got one campaign here that's saying, okay, I want awareness uh, amongst people. Then you're gonna define, well, who are you targeting? Um, multiple cities, multiple states. Uh, so you can set it by geography. And you can, this is also where you say, hey, Facebook, go and find more people like uh, the ones that have already purchased from my store. And then at the third level, uh, there's the ad level, the actual creative. Um, and that's how you organize campaigns. Campaign, ad set, ad. All right, so these are the 11 campaign objectives that you can choose when running an ad. Uh, so you can see them broken down, awareness, consideration, conversion. Uh, brand awareness 
it will optimize the ad uh, to maximize people remembering who you are within two weeks of, of encountering it or reach, which is just an absolute reach objective. I want to reach every single person that I've defined in my target market, 35 to 45 year old women within you know, eight kilometers of my store or whatever. It's pure reach. And this is the trick with campaign optimization. If you optimize for one objective, uh, you, you don't get as much, uh, say, so if you optimize for reach, the clicks to your website won't be as high as if you were optimizing for traffic, which is what the traffic optimization is. Um, if you optimize for traffic, you might not get as many video views as you would if you optimize for video views. If you optimize for video views, you might not get the reach that you'll get with reach, uh, and so on and so forth. And then when we see in the conversion uh, section, that's where we're talking about very specific sales related things. To see how it says catalog sales. So that's what we mean. Shopify's catalog will integrate straight into Facebook and you can say, I want to optimize for sales. So over the 10 years now that I've been running campaigns on Facebook, uh, I've come to get to sort of levels of where what I think are acceptable and reasonable uh, costs per particular uh, campaign objective. So if you're looking for reach, you're probably going to pay about eight to ten dollars CPM. So that means cost per thousand people reach. So um, want to reach a hundred thousand people uh, with a reach objective, then you're going to spend hundred dollars. Is that correct? Um, if you want video views, um, you'll the, you know we tend to look at we optimize for video view to hundred percent. So Facebook can be a little bit tricky. It's, it, it, you say, I've run an ad and I've got 100,000 views, but Facebook counts a view only if you've watched the three seconds. And that's not meaningful. That's not a meaningful impact. Um, and I'll, sh I'll show you a little bit more about how that plays out a bit later. Traffic, about 25 cents cost per click uh, or less. Uh, for some reason, the algorithms are just getting better and better and better. The average for the first five years, five years six years was around 30 to 40 cents. Uh, the average over the last 10 years now is 25 cents, but I'm seeing 15 to 20 cents now cost per click with really well optimized campaigns. And so conversions, and I'll give you a little uh, idea about what conversions are. So you can define, a conversion is uh, an action that someone takes on your website. So that's what this pixel is so important for. So you can say, okay, I want to optimize for conversions and the conversion I want to optimize for is recipe views on our Love Australian Prawns page. So um, the algorithm will then optimize for people who are more likely to browse. Uh, if I'm optimizing for catalog sales, it's going to show ads to people who are more likely to buy. If I want traffic, it will show the ads to people who are more likely to click. So the best way to create a solid campaign is not just go for one campaign objective, but layer three campaign objectives. Uh, for your campaign. So here's an example I'm gonna build for you for a, um, say a seafood retailer in a busy capital city. And we're actually gonna make a campaign of three campaigns to absolutely maximize uh, the effect of what we're doing. So we start off with a reach goal. Now I've um, dropped a pin here. So when you plan out your campaigns, you can either type an address in, a state, uh, a postcode, or you can actually physically drop a pin and then, and then describe the radius uh, of how far you want that to go out. And when you do, you get an instant, feed you get instant feedback as to how many people uh, are being targeted there. So this is in Sydney. I think it's Steve Costi Seafood in Westfield, Miranda. Uh, so a super busy place within one point, well, with one mile, within uh, 1,600 metres, we've got 52,000 people. Now, if we're going to spend a $1,000 budget, I'm going to spend $250 of this budget on reach. Okay, but I only want to reach 10 to 30,000 people for it to be effective. 52 is too much. So I'm going to narrow my targeting down just a little bit. I'm going to add all those people who are within that bubble, but who are interested in seafood. That's now brought it down to 36,000. Yep, that's pretty fair. So what I do, create the ad now and set it to go. Um, what we're doing here is offering, it's a video ad, um, but it's offering to come into the store for a free summer cookbook. Okay, so layer one, reach. But 
So what I'm doing next is now I'm going to optimize for traffic. I want people coming to my website as well so they're aware of my brand and of my store. So I'm going to widen out my reach now to the driving distance uh, or the delivery distance. So to the outer reaches of someone who's willing to actually physically come to my store. When I widen it out, especially in a heavy population centre like Sydney, okay, I'm going to have to do uh, a few things. So yes, those who are interested in seafood, uh, in that circle, it's almost a quarter of a million people. $500 is going to disappear trying to reach them. So I'm going to say people who are not only interested in seafood, but also interested in cooking. Okay, it brings it down to 50,000. But who are, must also be interested in recipes. And now we've got 36,000 very, very highly likely to be interested in, or people who are very, very likely to be interested in my, um, in my product. And bang, I create the ad, away that goes. So now I've got a third objective. And as you can see, this is a very, very, very good objective for anyone who has a bricks and mortar store. It's actually store traffic. So Facebook, being a mobile platform, knows where you are. So when you run an ad for store traffic, you're going to see uh, that your results are people actually coming through the door. Facebook will tell you. Now, how am I going to target store traffic? I'm actually going to use the people, I'm going to target the people who have commented, liked, or watched the video on my other two ad streams. Um, and what I'm going to do is to really engage them is actually create what's called an instant experience. So you'll see the ad in the middle there uh, is it just a small ad with a video that shows how to make a uh, surf and turf recipe and a call to action to come into uh, the store. But when you tap on that in mobile, it opens up into what's called an instant experience, a really, really engaging ad unit. So look on the right. So you're on Facebook. There we go. You've seen the ad. So there's the ad. And that's great. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, there's a bit of movement. My eye's being caught. Uh, what's that get you? Some of the cookbook. I tap that little arrow. And now it's opened up into a full screen mobile experience, which is this intermediate step between seeing the ad on Facebook and coming to the website. It just really helps uh, get customers a little bit more engaged before the click. So we've got all sorts of different things we here we can do. We can um, have other videos of, of uh, making recipes. We can tap to look at the recipe book. Um, and so what we're just looking to do is get people excited and hungry and interested. Uh, and they can even tap a button to view the recipe book. There's a printed one in store, but just in case. Uh, so now you can see actually we're on the website. So, you know, it's, it's made that click more seamless, more frictionless. Uh, and it's a, it's a great ad unit to consider. And I can talk to you much more about it. It's an experience. It's how to build those ad units at some time in the future. So, well, that's great. That's one store. But what if you're a producer and you distribute uh, to 60, 70 stores? How do you scale that? You know, we've just done three campaigns. It's actually not too difficult um, because when you make ads and ad sets and campaigns, you can just copy and paste them and just change a single detail. So this is what we did for the Professional Fishers Association in New South Wales. We distributed recipe books uh, to 100 stores. And we thought, well, okay, let's do that. Let's drop a pin near 25 retailers. So you can see, um, And not only have we got 25 retailers, we've got four different ads for every single retailer. So um, once we've created one ad, it's just very easy to copy and paste. Once we've created one ad set, it's very easy to copy and paste. So all of a sudden, one person in an afternoon is able to, let's have a look. So in this campaign, summer recipe for retailer support, how many ads did we create? 114 different pieces of creative. And look at that, each one of them doing its own little job in its own little way, producing you know, different metrics. And we can even go and have a look at this. So remember that instant experience I talked about? We can see how many seconds people are engaging with that instant experience. So they're averaging 23 seconds on the instant experience. We've had 7,500 clicks to our website as a result. And how have they, oh, hello Marshall. 
Then uh, ten minutes, mate. Ten minutes. Okay. Yep. I think we're on. We're on track. All right. Um, all right. Video engagement. So you saw there were videos in our in our ads. So look at this. Video plays on the right hand side. Down the bottom, 180,000 video plays. That's amazing for a $2,000 spend. But then let's have a look a little bit further. Video plays, 25%, halfway through, three quarters of the way through, 95%, 100%. Okay, let's look at, oh, it reduces down to 5,896. That's still amazing because they're a minute long. So, but it just um, flags that when you're, that you have to be careful about the metrics that you're gonna to use to measure the success. And don't go to the vanity metrics, be hard on yourself. Yes, how many views all the way to the end? 5,896. Um, for a $2,000 spend, that includes, and again, we weren't optimised for video views, we are optimised for clicks. Um, we had 7,500 clicks, so our cost per click is, you know, around the 30 cent mark. Pretty good. And we've reached performance. And we've reached 90,240 people, but again, in that tight little radius around every single store, not a single ad is being wasted, um, whereas you know, someone can't buy the products that are being sold. All right, um, so online sales. So that's great. That was, that was how we drive or set up a campaign and drive tra traffic to bricks and mortar stores. Selling online is actually even easier. So what we want, of course, is traffic to our website and we want catalog sales. And so I just, on Saturday, set up because the Love Australian Prawns campaign, we do sell a cookbook to consumers. And I thought, oh, I'll just activate a campaign on Saturday uh, and see how it goes. And I've actually activated it to do two different audiences just for a little bit of an A-B test. And I actually only started the second audience this morning. So again, the pixel is what we're looking for. 93 clicks to the website. We've had six sales for $71 in revenue. So our website purchase, our return on investment for our advertising is actually 2.06. So for every dollar we spend on advertising, we've made $2.06 in sales in the last 48 hours. And I can tell you that instant feedback. Um, I'll show you what the ad looks like too. Uh, it's nothing special. Because what matters is the targeting. What matters is, is more, so, more than the, the creative. Um, this is what it looks like. So again, we've created a product catalog. Facebook has actually grabbed the image, grabbed the product description from our Shopify catalog. I haven't made that. I've just said, that's the product I want to sell. Uh, Facebook's pulled all those details in for me. And I think, where there in terms of um, so the super super magical part about this is once you've had your first hundred online sales you can then that's enough data for facebook to start building a very accurate picture of who those buying customers are and do that look-alike audience go out and find more of them so getting those first hundred sales is crucial get 500 sales and then you've got a really good um, you know, self-generating targeting machine. <clears throat> so as a bit of a wrap up, um, you know, if you're gonna plan a campaign for bricks and mortar stores, plan to reach the 10 to 30,000 people closest to your store, adjust the radius so it suits, if it's a sparsely populated area, make it wider. Um, and re then retarget people who engage with those first two campaigns. and. There we are, we're, we're, we're done. I guess we can, <coughs> pardon me, uh, go to questions. Uh, Marshall, has anyone been asking questions in the poll? Uh, at this point in time, uh, no, Ben, but um, I, look, I just wanted to, uh, to say uh, thank you for a very in-depth and very detailed presentation on social media and online marketing. Boy, there's a lot to absorb, but uh, very interesting and very enlightening. So look, Anyone, um, I'll have a quick look to see if there's any questions. I can't see anything coming through at the moment, but look, if you have any further information that you need, um, please contact Ben at uh, ben, ben at adpower.com.au. Ben, would that be the best email address to get you on? Yep, that's great. 
Okay. Uh, so we do have one from Patrick. We've got then, how do you get info on how to cost for a business plan? Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming is that how to cost uh, cost a campaign? Um, well, there's, there's two ways. I've given you some um, metrics about what, what's an acceptable cost per acquisition or cost per view. So, you know, you can say, okay, if we want a million views uh, at 11 cents per view, um, multiply that out, put in the business plan. Um, and software costs, well, that's the great thing about these ones um, is that it's just a monthly plan. So Shopify, $29 a month to $79 a month. Um, and so, you know, that, that cost is fixed. As I said, uh, they take a small clip out of the transactions, but obviously you build that into your pricing. Um, so, you know, it is very easy to cost out uh, the software costs. There might be, so if you say $29 a month, you can say there might be a couple of connectors that you need, an extra $20 a month, but you'll get away with uh, setting up a store, even a sophisticated one for $100 a month or less. And how do you know which platform is best for your product? Um, it's, well, what matters most is your market, I guess. Uh, the platform doesn't really matter. The platform is just a, a, a catalog that publishes your products. You choose where you want to publish them and how you want to publish them. Uh, and, and so it, the best, well, read reviews. I found Shopify to be great. As I said, WooCommerce is another option for if you're familiar with WordPress. Um, but yeah, there's always, always Google helps. Um, but Shopify is, is, is a pretty solid, well-supported uh, platform. Others uh, are more niche like Etsy, uh, which is more for if you're a home crafter. But if you want to go commercial, you want to sell at scale, uh, I'd strongly recommend WooCommerce or uh, Shopify. Oh, Facebook versus Instagram. Um, doesn't matter, actually, because you're targeting, the criteria that you're using to target is uh, not for the platform. So Facebook puts your messages out to Facebook and Instagram. It owns them both. So you don't have to worry about Facebook via Instagram. Uh, LinkedIn, very, very expensive, very, very niche. Um, I think you should start with Facebook. And you, again, your campaigns are all automatically pushed out to, to Instagram. The reason Facebook's good is because there's 18 million out of 26 million people on the platform. So with that 18 million, you can be much more effective if you go niche, super niche. And so if you've got a bigger audience, greater audience to begin with, um, you've got more chance of more people fitting the criteria that you're setting for your marketing. Um, do you need to register, e.g. ACCC? Uh, yes, you've got to be registered for uh, tax, etc. cetera. Um, so you've got to be a business and Shopify will, you know, um, I think, you know, you're not, going to, you're not going to be sneaky about it. You're going to have to hook up your business. Uh, PayPal, also you're going to set payments through PayPal. So PayPal wants you to be an accredited business. Um, so you can start off small, but once it's, it gets to scale, believe me, um, I'm sure the algorithms talk to each other. So it's always good to make sure that you're paying the right GST, you've got all of those settings right. Um, it makes sense, it's just part of being a good retailer or operator anyway. Um, ben, I have a, a question from Peter Horvat. Uh, firstly, he says, thanks for the presentation, Ben. Is it correct to say that people do not need to settle for only advertising one way, uh, that is reach, location, interests, any more, and a mixed approach is better? Absolutely, a mixed approach is better. So you've got 11 events to optimize for. As I suggest, you know, you treat it like a funnel, reach as wide as far as you can, but then get more granular and granular as that funnel gets smaller. I, it's absolutely, um, what I've seen really lower the cost of acquisition is not, don't just run one campaign with one aim. Make sure you reach people, make sure you drive traffic to your website, make sure you remarket and follow up. Okay, all right. I think, oh, hang on, hang on. sorry, we have another one in there. Um, again, from Peter Horvat. Uh, most of the online stores are pretty legit. They require you to fill in some basic details, business name, bank accounts. 
they are fairly foolproof is, is a comment from Peter Hall. Yeah, if you want the money, you've got to hook it up to your bank account. And who can see your bank account? Okay, all right. Um, well, um, on, on that note, um, let me just have a look here, see if there's anything else. No, we're pretty done dusted. So look, Ben, once again, uh, can I say on behalf of the Queensland Seafood Markets Association and, and everyone out there today, thank you. Thank you very, very much for, for a very informed and detailed presentation. Um, everyone, please don't forget our second session next Monday, same time, same channel, presented by the very experienced and entertaining John Sussman, entitled Branding Bold and Beautiful. Uh, our thanks also once again to FRDC for their support, financial and otherwise, in helping to get these webinars to you. Again, if we have enough support, we'll endeavour to roll out other marketing webinars down the track. So stay safe, everyone. Stay safe, everybody. And uh, hopefully we'll catch you all again next week. Good night. Thank you, FRDC and QSMA.